Hello and welcome to the final episode of the Perth to Paisley podcast just this year. Don't worry, we're not just suddenly going. That's us done. See you later. It is episode number 68. This is going to be an utter shambles. We're putting this right there at the start. We've, we've got so much to talk about while simultaneously having nothing to talk about while simultaneously massive season altering things have happened during the day that we're recording this so it's going to be some laugh i as ever i'm daniel in my christmas jumper because it's the christmas episode ready for the episode however as you can see if you're watching the youtube version my co-host adam is not in the festive spirit and i want an explanation even though i think i know why but you need to explain to everybody else First of all, hi mate. Thanks hi. very much. You're doing <laughs> thanks, all right. Hi. Thanks very much for the warm introduction. Um, second of all, uh, yeah, I'm not. I am feeling festive, somewhat. Um, obviously, I've got deadlines of plenty. Finish up at work soon, so that will be great. The festivities can begin, um, despite potentially writing up on festive fixtures. Although it, right now there might not be any festive fixtures going forward, so we'll wait and see. Um, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm actually in, do you know what? My mood's been up and down like a yo-yo all day. I've had highs and lows. So currently right now, I think I'm on a high. I, I, I'm feeling good ahead of this episode, despite a rubbish performance. Um, but we won, so who cares? What an amazing attitude. You still haven't explained why you're not wearing a Christmas jumper. Yeah, no, I, I, right. So I was asked, um, for those that, Actually, no, from those that have listened to the podcast for a good wee while, you'll know that during the COVID Cup final, I was asked to kind of do a little fan segment for the highlights package for Sports Scene. Um, the producer that day texted me last week asking if I'd be up for filming something ahead of the Edinburgh Derby on Sky Sports, to which I said yes. I obviously was told to wear my club colours. Um, and given that I've been cracking on with other stuff, I haven't got changed because I'm a lazy bastard. So here we are. Bang. Brilliant. I would just like to say I was also asked to do this thing as well, but I can't because I'm working. So Marvellous. Adam that's, will that's represent great. us. Adam will represent oh, us God. if the game does indeed go ahead. But the big F. we'll get to that much later in the show. First of all, yes, as Adam said right at the start, it was not a great performance at the weekend, but it was a win. However, before we speak about Could that... Care less. We'll take that all day. We're going to speak about all the other results in the rest of the league with Around the Ground. So Rangers, I don't know if you could say struggled to get a 1-0 win over Dundee United. The scoreline is probably looking more narrow than the actual performance was. Motherwell continued their kind of recovery in form as they battered St Johnston. 2-0 in a performance that is just St Johnston do not look good at all. And then the last of the Saturday games was Livingston and Ross County drawing in, again, what seems to be following Livingston, a reasonably controversial game with lots of talking points that Martin Dale was on about. What did you make of those three games on the Saturday? Um, had Motherwell to beat St Johnston 2-0 because St Johnston are genuine jobbies um, and we'll come to that later on. Um, I feel as though we should be on a rescue mission for one of their players. I'll say more on that later mm-hmm. on. Um, so I, I, I honestly believe that St Johnston could get relegated. I, I don't think it's a stretch. They simply do not score goals. They've so only scored nine goals this season. Like, and d- defensively, they're not even that bad in terms yeah. of... I think it's literally the top three, including ourselves, that have conceded less. Mm-hmm. Um, but they just can't score goals. So January is going to be interesting. Um, routine win from Motherwell, and obviously then that meant that we had to get something. So I'm delighted to see that that was the case. Elsewhere, Rangers beating United was a nap, but when it got to, I don't know, about 60, 65 minutes... And they hadn't broken through what was a depleted United team. I think there was a fair few teenagers, obviously, with COVID like cases and whatever. Six missing or something like that. Yeah. Um, so that that was as expected, albeit I, I did anticipate it being more convincing. Um, I had Livy to beat Ross County 2 1. So when I saw that County took the lead, I thought that would be interesting. Should they have held on for the three points? But then, of course, they didn't. Uh, given the Levy equaliser. So nothing really to shout home about other than 
Hearts having to win, and for once it feels like successfully doing so. So that was great. Yeah, absolutely. I, I can't really say much else about the other games apart from, of course, Ross County coming to some form of form before they play us. Oh, nothing, nothing sure. I think they've picked up something like nine points from 18 or something, it's something like that b- b- before that. Um, and obviously, it'll be interesting to see how they get on with their basement battle against St Johnston if it goes ahead the night that this episode's released. So, yeah, that's that's going to be quite the uh, quite the spectacle between those two, given it's our next two opponents, 11th and 12th respectively. <sighs> Please, Hearts, just just do the deed. That's, that's even if they go ahead. <laughs> well, the last game at the weekend was on Sunday, and it was the League Cup final as... <laughs> They Hibs it again. They Hibs it again with their own smoke bombs as Hibs oh, lost please. to Celtic 2-1 in the no. Cup final. What did you make it? How much did you watch of it? For example, I only watched the second half. I missed the whole first half. I, I was working Sunday afternoon, so I was listening right. to it on Sports Sound. Um, and me, obviously, staying where I stay. There's a fair few Celtic fans in the department. Um, so needless to say... I was begging them on the Sunday morning to do the deed. Um, Listen to it through the back with another Celtic fan. Um, and then when Hibs, when I heard that Hibs had gone one <laughs> up, I was just thinking, I was like, oh no, don't tell. Uh, you know when you, like you wake up on the day and you'll sometimes get a funny feeling. I didn't think it was going to be convincing for Celtic at all. I mean, the performance suggests that it was, mm-hmm. albeit the scoreline, maybe not. And when I hear that they'd missed several chances in the first half, you know, you know what happens. Don't, like it's the oldest uh, rule in the book: if you don't take your chances, you'll get punished. So um, as soon as Hibs go on off, I'm thinking, brilliant, that's it. They've actually done it. Before you continue on this point, and then my dad, right? So my dad was pretending it wasn't happening, and he was out like, a walk. Like that approach. That's a good one. <laughs> and he told me after the game that. He, he got back to the house and the car was parked in a different bit, so he was moving the car back down and he put the key in the ignition. And when he did, the radio came on and it went, Martin Boyle swings across and then Paul Harden scored in terms of win one up. And my dad was just like, I've avoided it this whole time. Missed it. So furiously it turned it off, parked car, went into the house to my brother and was like, Hibs are winning it. My brother was like, no, they're not. It's one all. And then you can explain how it was one all so quickly. <sighs> Just uh, that is the definition of hibsing, <laughs> isn't it? Really? <laughs> I mean, it, I don't even know where to like where to where to begin. Uh, what about what the best thing that's come of it is the video, the video the of in the crowd and the countdown clock. I was <sighs> howling. It's just oh, incredible. What you I think it's is, offside? <sighs> I don't think it is genuinely. That's not a Hearts fan like. I, I, I really, I really don't know. What I will say is John Beaton didn't cover himself in glory throughout the entire <laughs> ninety minutes, did he? he did not. So, like, Hibbs needed a decent performance from the eleven on the park, on top of the officials, and they got neither. So, that's that's life. And then yeah. the they they could have had their inquiry into the SBFL, but chose not to. So we move on. Yeah, Kuroga's finish for the second was amazing as well. Great goal. It was annoyingly. He uh, he just infuriates me. See if he actually cut out all the antics, the diving, the general nonsense. I could appreciate the talent, but when you're coming with this sort of baggage, it was like Alfredo Morelos before, like he got or seemingly got the screw down. Like it's just nuts. And Kyogo just like the whole falling about the floor, this, that, and the other, like the slightest touch. Come on, like stop all the play acting, and I can appreciate your talent. Maybe if Ryan Porteous had kind of played up to the play acting, oh, he got that penalty. <laughs> Ryan Porteous, do I look happy? <laughs> do you look happy? Get that right round you, you absolute melt. Learned absolutely nothing of supporting Hibs for 20 years. Acted Billy Big Boss and look what it's got you. Get it, honestly, get it so far around you. So pleasing. I hope the shirts are selling fantastically, Hibs. I hope they're going really, really well. I heard, they were, giving, I heard they were giving them away. Yeah, exactly. Aye. You love to see it. So, 
we are a hearts podcast <laughs> so, so we... sorry if that started a bit strong there <laughs> no it's all right so yes we traveled to the city of discovery to a ground that we are not very good at discovering wins at and there was a did you, that was just a fantastic that was, that was, that was absolutely terrible it was a great segue to what you're talking about so we went back to the 343 away from home and it, the lineup to be polite was met with a bit of confusion i think that's how we'll say it yeah you you could say that yeah, um, definitely. Um, so I, I, I just, I just hate the way. Sorry, mate. I just hate the way that Hearts, and it's not so they get Hearts because, <laughs> like, all the clubs do it. Go and stop arranging it numerically. Like, try and give us positions or something. It does my no. See, I, I, I want it oh, to stay because I, I like it. I like the hour period where fans are just going. I think it's this. And then another one goes, no, oh, I think it's no, this. That does my box in, man. Because you hear different things. Like like you say, you're literally scrolling down. Like I didn't know whether it was a 4-3-3, whether it was a 3-4-3, whether it was a... 4-2-3-1. 4-2-3-1. All oh, this other nonsense. Oh, no. It's, it's, not, it's not for me. But that's that's life. Well, said lineup was a 3 4 3, and it consisted of Craig Gordon in goals, Suter, Halkett, Kingsley as back three, Halliday coming back in after his suspension. Your Moore, mate. yeah, my best friend. <laughs> Halliday and Taylor Moore as wing backs, Haring and Devlin in the middle. It was the answer to the question Is Devlin suspended for this game or the next <laughs> game? The answer yeah. was the next game. I did. I did put that in my preview, I think, that he misses the county game because that's right. the one Boxing Day. So. Yeah. Yeah, and then uh, uh, Barry Anderson helped a great deal, I must admit. <laughs> good, good, I'm glad. And then a front three of Barry Mackay, Ben Woodburn, and Gary Mackay Stephen. Your other mate. Oh, it's just all my friends. <laughs> Join your them. Pals, your yeah. pals in the election. Absolutely. What did you make of the team when you saw it? There was no boys at all in the squad, no, that which was made a lot of people question slash, why. Yeah, yeah. Um, however, it was then confirmed that his calf strain has kind of. And no Mikey Smith either. Yes, exactly. No Michael Smith. And it was just kind of like, oh, okay, our two two of our best players are not even in the squad as options. Um yeah. what did you think? I, I was I was obviously surprised given that I'd heard nothing kind of in the pipeline to see them both omitted. Um what I will say is I wasn't all that impressed once I'd seen the you know jumble of names. Um, and it's a terrible thing to say, but it was genuinely my first thought. I thought, if this doesn't yield a positive result, Robbie's going to have a lot of defending to do. So I thought it was strong enough, albeit not near our strongest. Um, my my concern was offensively, to, to be honest. I just looked at it and thought, Taylor Moore's not a right wing back. So then I wondered if, if it was a 4-3-3 with he and Kingsley at fullback, that would then mean that Andy Halliday was in the middle of the park when I believe that he's a better left wing back than he is a central midfield player and no recognised striker again. Um, being critical of Ben Woodburn in the past few pods, thought, okay, he certainly seems to be the most likely to start as that sole striker um, with Barry Mackay and Gary Mackay Stephen supporting him. So was intrigued to see how the 11 got on um, but not all that optimistic, if I've got to be honest. I think that's pretty fair. I think the kind of prevailing opinion was that, that you were saying that if this doesn't go right and we don't get a win, there will be a lot of questions asked of yeah. Robbie. Um, now, what followed was one of the worst games of football you ever go to see. I was just thinking, we we started this pod in terrible times for this football club. It speaks volumes now. What is this, episode 68? Mm -hmm. That this game could genuinely rank as one of like the top five, ten of the worst that we've come back to cover. Like, it was genuinely terrible. Um, Not in the sense of, like, it was Brora Rangers or Motherwell away or Aberdeen away where it was like, no, just, know, we're getting bad. It just, just uneventful. nothing happened. Yeah, just, just a general nothingness. Like, even when you see the highlights packages of the two, like, I, I watch Sports Scene along with Hearts TV and whatever, like, 
they're actually doing well to make highlights. Yeah. I know that sports scene shoved in like a, an offside Danny Mullen chance, for instance, and Jamie Walker's offside that shouldn't have been. But, and perhaps it is just a case of clutching at straws, but I actually thought, do you know what? Fair play. You've, you've gave it your damnedest, despite there being genuinely nothing to chat about. Yeah, it was, it was not fun. And part of that, showing it is that in the 24th minute was the first time something of note happened and in fairness it was definitely something of note as Stephen Kingsley what a player what a man not just a player what a man a wonderful man exactly um Stephen Kingsley has the ball and Max Anderson who if I remember rightly there was talk of him potentially getting sent off the last time we played at Dens in the championship. Um, the only reason I say that is because I saw somebody on Twitter say that's twice he's done that to us at Dents. I don't think there was anything that severe, but I think he was going to be, people were calling for a double is that, yellow. Is that the 3-1? Yes. I can't remember any specific situations, but people were saying that, on Twitter that that's another one. However, what we're talking about is Stephen King's has the ball, Max Hansen goes for a slide, and in fairness to him, wins the ball, the ball Goes away, but as he continues, he follows through, or does he follow through? That's part of the discussion. He potentially follows through, slash, his foot gets stuck and it kicks forward. But regardless, we know where it ends up. He full on studs up, studs Stephen Kingsley in the shin. Now, the Hearts players almost stop for just a foul. There is the assumption from some, notably Mr. Cameron Devlin, as he's sprinting towards Willie Collum, that there will be some form of card, but the assumption is that it's a foul. However, no, the game just carries on as Stephen Kingsley's lying in the heap. And it eventually... Yeah, because it wasn't a hamstring injury at Park yes, Head, mate. exactly. That. That's, that's the only time that it'll get pulled up, remember? Yeah, definitely. I did forget about that. Until it ends up in Craig Gordon's gracious hands and then Willie Collum decides to pull it back and check on Stephen Kingsley. Stephen Kingsley then kind of continues for about four or five minutes until it's very much apparent that he cannot continue. Alex Cochrane comes on for him, who I thought was fine the remainder of the game, and it has been confirmed after the game from Robbie that it doesn't look good, is the quote. He was in a protective boot, and uh, he went for an x-ray. The club haven't so far said. We haven't had any update, basically, on Kingsley. What did you think of the challenge in the moment obviously Laurie and Rob who were doing the commentary didn't have any replays uh, myself and Joel Sked kept getting shout outs during the stream as we were supplying them with replays and photos uh, it, so it was both myself and Joel's photos and videos of the incident that made them realize oh yes that is definitely a red card but what was your assessment of the situation I'm probably more surprised at the club's Lack of action is the wrong phrase. The lack of clarity, perhaps, from the club regarding Stephen Kingsley, um, with him being a key player and whatnot, or just elsewhere in the press. I'm not saying that Hearts you know, have to release a statement where it's like, John Nelms must condemn, Max Anderson <laughs> should never play football again. Um, because, let's be frank, it is a bad challenge from Max Anderson. I, I was listening to Sports Scene, and Rory Loy is becoming one of my favourite pundits he's, within the, he was the Scottish really game. Good. I really like listening to him on the radio and whatever. Um, and I think he's one of probably the best up-and-coming pundits. He said that it was unintentional and that it's an innocent challenge. I, I can appreciate he does win the ball, but it, it is the follow-through that everybody rightly talks about. And in this day and age, for me... You know, you see these discussions every other week with players winning the ball, but with malice and intent to not only win the ball, but effectively lay it on somebody else. We saw it down south with the Harry Kane challenge on Andy yeah. Robertson as well. So uh, if Kane's, in my opinion, should be read as well, Max Anderson's can pretty much be filed under that bracket as well for me. And look... Then it's at nil-nil. Then it changes the complexion of the game. Then we'll have Dundee fans greeting and whatever. But the rules are the rules. And I can appreciate he wins the ball, but it's the it's the malice, it's the intent. And it's an absolute shocker on Stephen Kingsley. It really, I'm, I'm, I'm genuinely concerned because that does look a bad, bad injury. 
And the kind of main concern isn't replacing Kingsley in terms of like for like, because Cochrane has been fantastic. But Kingsley offers us something different in that outlet from free kicks. That has been 100%. such a weapon for us in our arsenal that is... There's not many teams in the league that you could say has a guy who you can count on to regularly score free kicks, and we will miss that if he's out. Of course, and I think I, I do like Alex Cochran, but I much prefer him as a wing back. So do I. Centre half. Yep. Yep. Um, so that it is a like for like, but Stephen Kingsley is a better centre half than Alex Cochran is. Um, despite the fact that I do like Alex Cochran as well, be interesting now. Obviously, your mate Andy Halliday will probably get a run of games. No. Um, in Stephen Kingsley's absence, no, no, he won't. Why We're not? not going to speak about it until the very end of the podcast. Oh, but some he, somebody's thought, coming, right? Okay, well, I, th- we I, thought, I thought he was other side. No, oh. he is. But what that means, I'll get to. I've got a full oh, right. tactics board ready oh, for this oh, happening. Dear God, what could possibly go wrong? You're going to like it. I promise you. I can guarantee that you like it. Fantastic. Well, I look forward to that then. Um. Right, so you're saying that. <laughs> so you, hold on a second. You're telling me that Alex Cochran will not, or that he'll just take up that slot and no, then be he'll be playing left wing back. Right. Okay. Okay. See, that's fine. stick but, around till the yeah, end, no, everybody, because we'll, we'll it'll get, keep you. It'll keep you listening. Great. We'll get to that then. Exactly. exactly. I can't wait for that. Uh, that was the only thing of note that happened in that first half. It was first absolutely was terrible. terrible. Like absolutely jobby. Yeah. So, and, that, and the worst thing was the, the action came in the second half, but you could barely see it. Well, this is the big so, thing. So at this point, we all come out for the second half. And whereas stay in Pilton, there was quite a lot of fog. And I was like, oh, uh, I wonder if it'll affect any of the games. I could not have thought how much it would affect the games as second half starts. And it just starts to descend over not really the middle of the ground, but the two sides, the goals. Dens is such a weird ground. I hate it. I fucking hate Dens. I, it really is odd. How can Tanadice be so much better and it's just over the road? Like, like, see, like, seriously, is that weird like curve on one of the stands? The fact it's on a hill. Can Dundee not just build a new ground? So, oh, like, did they have the money for that? Some yank has got to come in for Dundee, surely. Like, Ron the Cons bought Hibs, and we've got this other joker at um, United. What's the boy's name? What? For who? Dundee United. Oh, I can't mind his name, but I know who you mean. But forgot his name. Mind blank. Yeah. Him, though. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> Dundee must have uh, must have some some interest, surely. I mean, they're they're like they're tin pot, but they're not that tin pot. Well, I genuinely think Livy have got a better ground, and I hate going to Livy. You're helping me here because let's say this segue. Someone with interest from Livingston was Mister Jamie Walker, who made one of his few appearances this season as he replaced Gary Mackay Stephen, who again. Did absolutely nothing. Oh, of here, here we go. What did here's, he... the, here's the weekly GMS. No, this is this isn't anything. It's just he did nothing, and I'm now I'm now getting to the point where I just have apathy towards GMS. I just feel nothing towards him. This uh, this is also a point that I want to come on to, um, because I believe that we could find the answer to our prayers in January, but I'll, I'll save more for that. Mm, okay. I'll, I'll we're, just, that. we're just setting that's off it. teases. That's it. that's it. I thought our only teasers came through Twitter, Instagram, no. TikTok. No, just slipping them in. In the actual but, show. That's it. <laughs> that's what we're all about. It's just, it's just trying to drag the clock out, isn't it? We've got yes. the ball over in the corner. We're holding off the centre half and the accompanying fullback, and we're just, you know, shielded. Well, Jamie Walker came on the 58th minute and then 19 seconds later he got booked. And I was thinking, this is it. This is going to be another situation where we bring somebody off. Yeah, exactly, where nothing happens. Uh, However, he did actually do something very, very quickly. The ball gets played through the middle of the park and it ends up, after actually Ben Woodburn does quite well to kind of bring the ball forward. I'm delighted you said that. But that's the first 
decent thing I've seen Ben Woodburn do since his goals against United. It was the only it's, decent thing he did in that game, I know. Is there some sort of Dundee disease yeah, that Ben Woodburn has? He fucking hates the city of just Dundee. hates it. Hates Tannadice Street. Hates the lot of them. Yeah, I'm all for it. But he plays in Jamie Walker, who does incredibly well to get past Legston and kind of just calmly slot it in. But it's, Adam, it's disallowed. I think the official reason is that he's offside. But Nonsense. There seems to be confusion about whether or not it's for a foul, because he then pulls it back for a foul on us, because Ben Woodburn is believed to be fouled. But then the official reasoning behind it is offside, so surely it should be a Dundee free kick. Yeah, because if it was... Well, yeah, because otherwise, if he's... Like, I'd prefer the advantage than a Hearts free kick. But like you say, if he's been given offside, then that's theirs. But yeah, surely offside. that cancels out. Offside. Surely if he is offside, which you're right, he isn't. Surely if he's offside, that cancels out the advantage and therefore gives them a free kick. Hold, hold on a second. You're not seriously telling me that Scottish officials are incompetent, are you? Honestly. Surely, surely not. I'm, I don't want to do it in this way, but I, I might be suggesting that. I know it's a brand new concept to the that world. Is, that is a wild, that, I've heard some wild and wacky <laughs> concepts on this podcast alone, but that is right up there. It is. I mean, honestly, like we're talking about VAR and all this nonsense. We need it. Yeah, we need it, but there's like it's bottom of the priority pile for me. Nah, it's no. Nah, you wouldn't place it. a monkey in your in your driver's seat and expect it to just drive your car, would you? Aye, but. There's a difference between nuanced decisions like that offside where you can go, all right, listen, folk get that wrong all the time. But then other stuff like the red... I'm, I'm not even using the fog. Like, the, the fog. The fog is no <laughs> excuse here. Do your job. I'm going full Roy Keane. Do your job. Well, someone Grace. that did their job was Jamie Walker. As Barry Mackay... I'll be honest, at this point, I was completely blind. I was watching this at home and I had no idea what I loved Barry Mackay though because of his blonde hair. So I was like, that's Barry Mackay. He's that's got the, the ball. That's the only time we'll ever praise his Barnet. Yes, exactly. Barry Mackay has the ball on the edge of the box and he plays it to the substitute as well, Aaron McInerney, who replaced Ben Woodburn, literally 38 seconds before this goal. So talk but, about an impact. I, I didn't even know it was him. <laughs> it wasn't my could pick, could pick Barry Mackay out had not the foggiest if you'll pardon the pun who anybody else was not a clue well he shoots towards Legston however Fontaine who was probably the best Dundee player on the day kind of gets a block in and it goes off the post and it manages to end up at Jamie Walker's feet at quite a tight angle from about six yards out but fires it into the top corner Robert Borthwick loses the run of himself Laurie Dunstan is loving it. Every Hearts fan in the Dundee end is loving it. I was loving it at home. A great finish. We're actually winning in Dundee. <laughs> and oh, I, I, I'm actually, I've been pretty lucky at Dens. Um, was gutted to obviously miss the weekend, but it is what it is. Um, but yeah, we're, we're actually ahead. Haven't been anywhere near our best and looked on course for three points. I was listening to Sports Sound, and I was just sat at my desk, cracking on with some stuff, with Sports Sound on in the background, um, and then I'd obviously heard the roars and whatever, had a little glance down at the phone, and i just see goal, and it's just the, the gif and whatever they do, and then i just, yes, up giving it loudly. Oh, superb. I was craving that win over Dundee. So I'm delighted that we've firmly put the bastards back in their place. That was a horrible day at Tyne Castle. I know that we'll play them again before the split. Let's not have a repeat of that. Um, and yeah, I'll be calm. See, the problem is, though, at that point, we had already heard that Kilmarnock and Dunfermline had been called off. And just before that, I was going, they need to call this off. Like, they need to abandon it. As soon as I got in, I was like, you know what? There's 12 <laughs> minutes. Just keep playing, Willie. It's fine. Don't worry about it, son. Do, do you know what the worst thing was? Obviously, I've touched on sports down there. I'm listening to the pundits talk about the fact that Kelly and Dunfermline took a 10 minute break. For what? Are I they just know. expecting this to pass? Like, what is with the incompetence of 
just not even the officials per se, the entire governing body. Like how, what do these, like how long have you been living in Scotland? Seriously, I, I need to know. What goes through these folks' heads? Come I'm on. Somewhere. I'm down in Ayrshire. I could see it wasn't <laughs> getting any better. Like, how how bad did it have to get? Pretty bad, uh, apparently, because it got to the point where Lonnie Dunsire, Robert Borthwick, and the Dundee TV commentary were going, <laughs> eh, there's been a foul on the far side. I think, no, I think no it's idea. Taylor Moore who's been booked. However, it wasn't. It was John <laughs> Souter. His response booked. was brilliant to that on Twitter as well. Yes, it was. <laughs> Taylor Moore's class Fair on Twitter is really funny. Um, however, the last two moments that happened in the game was John Souter absolutely went through Lee Griffiths in Love one of the best it. challenges you've ever seen in your life. Saw somebody, I can't remember who it is, I'm really sorry. I think it was Hartrand who said, <laughs> it's pretty clear that Lee Griffiths, when he has the ball at his feet, still has that ability that he's had for the last 10 years. It's just a shame he's no longer a threat because he's so fat. And I just burst in laughing at that. To me. I, I'm, not, I, I'm inclined to agree, but certainly not seen it. I think he's only scored once for Dundee, and that was before we were meant to so. play them, was it not? Yeah, Against Aberdeen, so. if my memory serves. Yes, um, it was, because it was that was the, the result that made Dave Cormack go into the radio and the data. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I'm 49, got two weak knees, and I still move quicker than Christian Ramirez. That That's a like, good impression. That was some like random caller. That That's just, a good I, impression. I was by the way. honest to God, that Dave Cormack episode is not talked about. Like it's talked about a lot, but not enough. That was elite cinching. Well, something else that hopefully won't be talked about a lot is Cammy Devlin's chance right at the end. We can blame the mist. We can blame no, the fog. Can't, no, yes, we can. no, we can't. Yes, we can't. No, we can't. Why? Come on, talk, talk to me. He's your boy. How do so, you not control it? So, so a, a very poor ball is played through. Oh, it Devlin. would be. It would be. And Cameron Devlin is just trying his hardest to see everything. That, and he's trying to shield off the defender at the same time. That he just can't quite get the ball oh under. My However, it's God. fantastic uh, no, goalkeeping I, from Legsons as well. To come oh out. my! I'm I'm <laughs> actually I'm actually messaging Laurie to get girls out of text Cammy Devlin and talk us through this. That is it's a, um, it's it's a terrible a disgrace. It's a terrible mess. I don't know what but he's doing. To be fair, it actually reminded me of Ben Woodburn at Fur Park. If he gets it under, yeah. he scores. Yeah, that's fair. I, admit, I don't know whether we are putting maybe perhaps a little bit too much zip on it, but I like seeing us move the ball quickly and. Talk to me about Big Peter Haring. I can't believe you've not even mentioned No, I've him. waited. I've waited until right, the end. Okay. Okay. So the game finishes 1 0. Delighted for that. We've been rubbish, but three points. Down the road, hame, teeth, bed. Done. Exactly. Cool. Move on. Happy days. What we won't move on from is Peter Haring's performance. Now, at the start of this season, I was saying, I hope the signings of Devlin and Benny don't mean that Haring isn't shown a new deal slash given his place in the team. A lot of people last season were saying to me, listen, we get it. You like Haring. You need to move on. He's not good enough anymore. And I went, I understand that he slowed down because of the injury and he was never fast to begin with. But No, that's true. But he's never lost his ability and the way of reading the game. And since he's come back in, since Benny got hurt, he's just been fantastic. And the amount of tweets that I saw from the weekend, but it was like that wasn't a fog, it was the uh, smoke for Peter Haring's cigar. <laughs> that, just, that, was, that was a good one, too. Fair. He just strolled it, he absolutely so in a game where there was no quality from either side. I'm not just saying from us, but Dundee didn't look like they were ever going to do anything. Peter Haring was that what he was the lighthouse in the middle of all the fog of just being like, I've got this, don't worry, and I. I genuinely will be really angry if when Benny comes back in, Haring just goes back to the bench. I'd like to see them play together, Haring sitting deeper, or maybe Benny sitting deeper, because this is the thing. Haring proved it at home against Rangers and that game there. He has the best vision out of all three of them for switching passes, finding creative and attacking balls forward. He's always been a baller. My concern, touching on that Rangers game, was I, I gave him a little bit of criticism because I just I feel as though he sometimes slows it down. 
I think he, he can pick a pass. There's no doubt about that. But I just think... I actually think he's the perfect away ground player. That might sound a bit daft. But I think no, I know home, what you mean. Know at what home, mean. when we're expected to have the majority of the ball f- for most teams that we come up against, I just feel we've got to move it that little bit quicker sometimes. Whereas away from home, it's perhaps that shield in front of the back, three stroke four. And maybe maybe sometimes slowing it down, particularly in latter stages, if we've got to see a game out, Big Pete's perfect. There's there's no doubt about that from me. Um, I will say. I'll... So perhaps he's more an away player. I, I, I don't know. That's just my own daft little theory. I'd be interested to know what everybody says to that. I want to pick you up on one thing, though, because you're saying there that at home he kind of slows it down. And I agree. I'm not saying I disagree with that. Peter Haring, whenever he plays, he is... He does slow it down and kind of... Are you calm. saying like a calming influence is essentially what he brings? Yeah, because yeah. I think Benny also slows it down, which, and again, I'm not saying this as a negative. Yeah. You, need, you need a player to slow it down, but Haring can slow it down whilst then moving into a next phase of play. Benny can. Benny can yeah. play that forward yeah, pass. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd probably go along with that. Benny, Benny's... Benny's a neat sort of sideways backwards type isn't mm-hmm. he? Whereas Big Pete might occasionally send one forward. I get that. I'd I like know. them as a three in the middle with Benny sitting the deepest and Haring and Devlin pushing forward. Because Haring, he doesn't need to push that much forward, but his passing it, can bring it, us forward. But then we've got to go to a back four if that's the case. No, I think that's fine, though. I'd be fine No, that. of course. Listen, if it was a 4-3-3... Three, three, yeah, that's what I'd like. Field, yeah. Pace in the wide areas into Liam Boyce and whatever. That's what, I'd really I'm like camp. that. Yeah, I think that would be really interesting. There we go. We've managed to put a, a positive spin on that after all. Who'd have thunk it? Exactly. However, yes, yeah, so that did get us the win. A very much needed win after Motherwell won 2-0 at Fur Definitely. Park. So the points gap is still five points between third and fourth. But then we'll move on to the next three games. We're going to speak about two of them first because they're the kind of more run-of-the-mill ones, the Boxing Day... Got to be game. gimmies. Yes. Surely. Yeah. Got Boxing to be gimmies. Day, Boxing Day at home in Ross County, and then Wednesday the 29th, I want to say. Yes, 28th. a week. Yeah, a week tomorrow. Or week a week tomorrow. today as this... Yeah, a week today released. as the podcast goes out. Yeah. Um, we're placing Johnson at home. Now, we are going to talk about these games as if they're going ahead. We will get to why we're seeing that in a minute. Oh. But we are... We are just going to discuss this as it's going ahead. It is currently half past eight on the 21st. So if any news has come out in either the latter stages of tonight or the during the day tomorrow that these fixtures now won't be taking place, we're very sorry, but we can't do anything about that. Like it, We just out, have to speak about it. Out with our control, unfortunately. So we kind of spoke about it last week as well. So we won't spend as much time on these two games. We'll speak about the more important one in a minute. But you view this as it's a complete failure if we don't get six points out of these two. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. If we're chasing third against the bottom two teams in the league, it has to be six from six. Yeah, 100%. And mm-hmm. sorry, mate. I was going to say, mm-hmm. I think I'd probably be more confident for the Ross County game. Despite That's they, they are sharper offensively than St Johnston, but they concede barrel loads as well, mm-hmm. and we've got to take advantage of that. Um, I would, I would I actually wouldn't be surprised if that was a really high scoring game on Boxing Day. To be honest, um, I would not be surprised whatsoever. Um, and St Johnston will probably be dull, boring. I won't get it off work, so that's annoying. Um, so I'll be happy. I'll be happy to pass my ticket on to like my dad or somebody if it ends one nil heart. So I, I can live with missing, you know, a game against St Johnston because work actually gave me the derby off. So I was like, do you know what? Fair play. But now, obviously, now it looks like I'm getting to neither. So, yeah, it's not, exactly. so, so not really much of a much of a headache in that sense. But um, yeah, just win please. It'd be nice if it was two convincing wins. I get the feeling it'll be comprehensive against County, but perhaps stuttering against Saints. That's what I'll opt for. Could I get score predictions from you for both of them? Boxing Day, Hearts 3, Ross County 1. And then Wednesday the 29th, 
parts oh, one or two, I'll say two St. Johnston nil. We'll go with that. Can I just say, didn't even touch on last last week. Last week we were recording. Dundee played Hibs at Easter Road. I said 1 0 Hibs. Oh, of course. Got that right. The Wednesday night, Rangers beat St Johnston 2 0 Ibrox. Got that right. Ross County, their 97th minute concession to Celtic resulted in a 2 1 loss. Got that right. Three midweek fixtures, three correct scores for this guy, not a single penny on it. What an absolute mug. Raging with myself. And now that you'll start, they'll all be wrong. Oh, nothing sure. Hearts will probably beat County 2-0 and we'll beat St Johnston 3-1. There you yeah. go. Yep, that's almost nailed on. I think it's going to be 3-0, 2-0 us. Nice. Like I'm it. just going like, we should have no problems with these. Nice. I'll be very annoyed if we do. However... I'd be delighted if we manage to keep back-to-back clean That's well That's my after. priority as well. Yeah, that, that'd be nice. Um, we've both gone 2-0 to beat St Johnston then, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. That's a rare... Agreed scoreline as well. That is, that is, that is quite something. So it will both be two we'll nil and three past county. How no, bizarre. what's happening? It's Christmas. It's festive joy. But, 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 but I said we'll concede, so there's still that little part of the grinch in me. Yes, exactly. There is, however, another game that is much bigger than everything. However, <laughs> we don't know if it's happening. We don't know if it's going on. But obviously, David Gray took the team out on Sunday for the Hibs game. However, he is now no longer in the dugout as Sean Maloney has taken his first step into management. He's left the Belgian national team set up to mm. take the reins in a three and a half year deal at Easter Road. What How long the length of the deal was? Yes, three and a half years. Wow. Yep. So they're putting faith in him. It's clearly a project that they're looking to build. How do you feel about it? I think it's the, the exact same as everybody says, really, isn't it? It'll either be a riveting success or a, a glorious failure. We're obviously hoping for the latter. Um, and I hope that he's the new Ian Cathro. But I don't I don't get the impression that that would be the case, to be honest. Sean Maloney, like, like Ian Cathro, admittedly, is held in very high regard. Um, but I'd argue his CV is probably stronger than Cathro's was, given Belgium are what, the number one... Yeah. Ranked national team. In the world. I know the world rankings are for the most part really nonsense, yeah. but it's still a. Uh, they still are it's the, the number yeah, one ranked yeah. team. Can't, can't argue with facts, can you? So, um, look at goes without saying. I hope that he is a glorious failure. I hope that it shows that Ron Gordon has no idea what he's doing. Um, but fingers crossed. Let's let's see. Uh, what I will I will give Hibs credit. And that what what has depressed me about Scottish football recently is I see it more so in lower league clubs, which I understand given the resources and whatever. Like some of the names chucked in that hat for the Kilmarnock job, for instance. Like at least they've gone outside the box, Hibs, rather than them just going out to get Derek McInnes or mm-hmm. Neil Lennon back or whoever. Like Neil Neil Lennon's about the third favourite for the Kilmarnock job. Jack Ross immediately linked with it after leaving Hibs. Um, but Morton appointing Doogie Emery is funny, and Ayr could be appointing Marvin Bartley. So, hey, that's have you just, seen? That's just something. Have you seen who is also linked for the Kilmarnock job? Jack Ross, Neil Lennon, close to home. Oh, Neasy! Yes, yeah. I did see that. Yeah, do you think he'd take it? I think I think he would. It's like it's his boyhood club that he played for and like came through the ranks at. And here's your boy. I think he's from yeah. Irvine or something. Yeah, it's yeah. something like that. I. I hope he does now. I want him kept as part of oh, our setup. Without a doubt. Go and appoint Jack Dross. Come on, yeah, exactly. it makes sense. He and James Fowler are good pals. Get it done, Killy. However, Sean Maloney will uh, has taken charge, and I think it is an interesting I think it's an annoyingly good one. I think it's it's I think he's going to be more Nielsen than Cathro. Let's but, let's hope not. Let's hope not. However, big test for him early days as two games in basically, he then comes up against a third place Hearts team who is doing very well, especially in comparison to how Hibs are currently doing. Obviously, it's at Easter Road, but with the restrictions currently, which we will now speak about it because it's happened during the day today. Um, like, can I just say, I picked up my tickets for Easter Road during the day today. For I literally had a couple sources who will remain nameless 
they'd enlightened me that Nicola Sturgeon would be expected to make an announcement around two o'clock. So I got to Tyne Castle about half twelve, and I was like, Do you know what? I'm just going to pick up the Derby tickets anyway. Worst, worst comes to the worst, I've got them, and boo hoo, we don't, we don't get to go. But I'm begging that that's not the case because this is literally the fixture that I've missed the most throughout all of this. It's literally the fixture that got me through last season, all of this season so far. To have it snatched when we're what two weeks away. Is just the biggest kick in the balls known to man. Well, the restrictions have been updated and starting from Boxing Day, it is now limited to 500 spectators in all forms of outdoor sporting events within Scotland. That means that the Ross County game, St Johnston games, both at home, are limited to 500. And this Derby does, which probably means that no away fans will be going to any of those games. It will be entirely home-based. Now, as we are talking and just to be sure, in case we haven't missed anything, I'm going to go into Twitter right now and double check as all the SPFL clubs were speaking about how they want to get the festive break extended and start it from Monday, this coming Monday, which, to be honest, I am very much in favour for. I, I don't know why they don't just have that anyway. It's a festive break. So why are you having it in mid-January? That's true. Surely have it around the festivities as it's a festive break. Honestly, man, why have we not been I think more... it's actually technically class as a winter break. But why, like, is that because... The... <laughs> I'm assuming their argument's going to be that the most severe weather will most likely be in January. Yes, yes, that is exactly the reason, which is the case. Right. But why, why do we not make more, like... I know that right. we've moaned wait, about. Wait. I know that we've we, we've moaned about the SPFL more than any other club, arguably in Scotland. We've not done enough. Like wait. Neil Doncaster no, is wait. on over three hundred bags a week and for uh, a year, and for what? Wait, what? What does he do? He must be on six, seven grand a week. Wait, we're not getting into discussions about the winter break. When there's all this stuff going Honestly, on, that's I, not the talking I'm, point. I'm, I'm 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 so angry at the SPFL. The SFA, all these clowns, man. Right. So, essentially, the clubs are asking for the festive break to be extended. Now, looking at journalists and the way they're speaking about it, it looks like it's all going to hinge on Sky. Because, of course, Sky have the contract uh, with all our games. And to be honest... Who agreed the TV deal? Who did that? No, I'm not disagreeing with it. I'm just explaining to people who potentially missed it the situation we're in. So Sky obviously are contractually obligated through our partnership to show games and their mindset will probably be, oh, look, suddenly lots more people can't go to games. So therefore need to find a way to watch it. So I, and this is completely me, by the way, this is not the views of the Petty Paisley podcast or I haven't got a source. I don't imagine Sky will want the festive break extended because they will want more people watching the games from home because it means that their viewership goes up. After <laughs> um, <laughs> your massive fan, you just don't have anything to say there. No, because I, I would agree if I genuinely felt as though they gave a toss about Scottish football. But, I, I, but they I, care I genu- about money. Well, yeah, but the vast majority of that comes from their English stuff, no? I know, but, the, but if you're saying the sky... Oh, by the way, you're not getting anything for this entire month for Scottish football, or you can get the old firm, the Edinburgh Derby, and the Dundee Derby in the space of two, three oh, yeah, days. No, the three biggest fixtures. Yeah, fair play. Is it is, well? The Dundee Derby is a three o'clock kickoff this oh, Sunday, is it? Yeah, aye. So, it must so I think been. it would only be the old firm and us, the Edinburgh Derby. Yeah. So, so there we go. The two big hitters, one of which. Let's be honest, is all that Sky have centered this team yes. around. So yeah. probably. But that's still incredibly annoying. It'll just be a case of get it round you. Here's the pay per views, and clubs will be licking their lips because they can charge extortionate rates because we're all sat at home greeting and needing the football. I don't think it will. I think they're really pushing for the games to be stopped uh, during this period until stuff opens. And that's what I hope happens in terms of the finances because I just think. 500 fans is so arbitrary. And I will say this. I I do want this to be made very clear. We, 
we understand that we're saying this from arguably the third biggest club in the country's perspective. We know that 500 fans for many lower league clubs is something massive and can be the lifeblood for it. Because, for example, 500 fans at, say, Hamilton, that's huge. If, for example, they pay £20 a ticket, that's massive. That's a huge amount of income coming at a club the size of Hamilton. However, there is that understanding of a premiership club going, for example, we've got a nearly 20,000 seat stadium. What is the point in 500 fans? What is the point in Ibrox for 500 fans? Imagine an old firm in front of 500 fans. I want to see that in fairness. That would be funny. That would be really funny. I've never watched an old firm fully. I would watch that. That would be really funny. But anyway, honest honest to God, like I could get in a rant about like pitches, clubs that do our game no purpose. (laughs) This, This has the potential to literally... Well, it was, we'd be as well just canning the whole thing. What is the point? 500 in a 50, 60,000 seater stadium. Well, anyway, right. Do me a favor. Let's honestly. get away from all this sad stuff. And oh. hopefully, by the time that this comes out tomorrow, there is a. We at least know what's going on. But anyway, let's just say that the end of Derby is going on, that we will be playing it on the third. What do you think is going to happen? <laughs> It's going to be a nil-nil draw, isn't it? After yeah, everybody, I, predi- everybody- I predicted that last time when it happened. <laughs> everybody, everybody will be pushing for it, and it will be so <laughs> underwhelming when it eventually happens. Um, if it goes ahead, we'll win. I don't like how confident you are. When you're confident, it's never good. How? I'm pretty sure if you go back and listen to the big games that we have played during the time that we've been a podcast. I'm confident now. I'll probably be papping my pants <laughs> okay, by the time it comes round. Aye, that's fair. We've got just under two weeks I, for you. No, did it, did it. I, I'm fairly certain that the la- the semi-final, which was the last behind closed door Edinburgh's, Edinburgh derby, I called 2-1 hearts. Yeah, you weren't confident though. No, but still called it. <laughs> <laughs> that's not the thing. So you no. think we'll win? We might not have Boyce. We might not have Kingsley. We still probably won't yes. have any. Yes, we're going to win. What is your score prediction then? Um, <laughs> Hibs nil, Hearts won. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Look, it's weeks away. It's probably not even going to go ahead. Probably not, but give me a score prediction anyway. I'll, I'll stick with nil one. I'm going one all. A slight upgrade on the previous one. <laughs> Still be underwhelming. No natural winner, but yeah. Exactly. However, we're going to close with a slightly different segment because we want to end on a positive thing. So, well, well, is this going into, you know, I mean, I know what you're going to go into, the, the signing that we are going to make. No, but... that's at the that's at the very end. All oh, right, 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 right. Okay. Your sorry, thing's sorry. next. Oh, good, good. This is what, yeah, good. This is what we're going to come on to. Yeah, yeah so <laughs> instead of Ending it with the sadness of restrictions and stuff like that. It's our last podcast of the year. We want to end it up. So this, however, starts quite negatively. There's a lot of long out of contract players at both Hearts and other clubs. Now, all the attention has obviously been on our out of contract players and the fact that, oh my God, please get everybody signed up for the There's love of There's literally the entire back line. Yes, exactly. Contract. Third best defensive record in the league, and we've still not done anything about it. Yes. Some laugh. Exactly. However, it has made Hearts fans potentially forget that, oh, yeah, other clubs are in the same situation. So Adam has compiled a list of out of contract, but okay, judging by his face, I reckon if it's a list, but he's got a few names that are out of contract. <laughs> I, I, I have. I've taken them from Transfer Markt. So take it with a pinch of salt. Mm-hmm. Um, I have been browsing the rest of the Scottish Premiership. Looking for a couple, couple little pieces of talent. Um, obviously, we do have the best goalkeeper in the country, but I'll start there. Um, there's actually a fair few Premiership keepers out of contract. If God forbid CG doesn't sign on, but please just get it done so we don't have to look at Jack Anik, uh, Xander nope. Clark, and nope. Benji Segrist. Mm. You take Segrist. Aye, Segrist would be. All right. And and John McLaughlin and Alan McGregor, but neither of them are coming. 
I'd take Joe McLaughlin every day of the week. I want him now, oh, please. So, oh, so would I. So yeah. would I. But he's but, not coming. But he's not coming. And ultimately, no. he couldn't fasten Craig Gordon's gloves. Um, right back. This is what I was alluding to earlier. If St. Johnston get relegated, please, Hart and Midlothian, sign Sean Rooney. I think he's just what we need. I'd, I'd love to see a ship <laughs> sign Sean Rooney. Eh? I really you know, would. He's very much in the mould of Callum Patterson in terms oh, of just like... He's a mentalness. A, a he's mental a case, sorry. <laughs> Literally. Obviously, I'd, I've touched on it before, but one of my pals down here, uh, Lewis, he's Saints videographer. <laughs> um, and I may or may not have sent a drunken video to Sean Rooney, along with another Hearts fan down here, Rav, Go Rooney, Rooney, Rooney. And so I would love to see that um, from the Tyne Castle stands. That'd be nice. Well, Sean that's Rooney's it. A, Sean that's Rooney's it. a player. That's all he's, he needs to sign. <laughs> he's never coming now. He's been put off. <laughs> and I don't want us to sign Sean Rooney. Why? Because of, because of someone we're going to speak about in a wee bit. Would you not have both? No. Why? Because this guy is young. And I want him to grow under the tutelage of Michael Smith. The tutelage? Ooh. Listen, just because you can't pronounce certain things that we've learned during this year. Such as? Give me an you, example. You always Fun. say, you always go, you, you always mean to say either, no, yeah, you always mean to say usher in, and you always say utter in. And people reply going, he always fucks that up. <laughs> he always does that up. Or it's the other way around. You always need to say utter, but they say usher. And somebody replies, oh, yeah, by the way, the same person that d- did that called me out for my hat, which, by the way, is still here. I'll still wear it. I'm not trying to be edgy, except I am. And that's my... I- the hat's I, going on for I'm the genuinely episode. astounded. I need to go back through previous episodes, but I don't yeah. watch this because it's rubbish. Oh, um, it's it awful. <laughs> We're speaking about fucking hats, man. Right, exactly. We should be talking about ballers to sign. Um, left back, very limited. I like Scott Tanzer. Would <laughs> we should be not. speaking about ballers to sign. Left back, there's no day. There's no, no. day here. C- Centre half's an interesting one because John Suter... He's away. Oh, He's yeah, away, I've, mate. I've, 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 uh, yeah, I've consigned to losing him. That's fine. Yeah, we'll, accept we'll, have, it. we'll have a little, a little break of silence. No, we're not doing that until he's actually away. Okay. We're not going to do this preemptively. <laughs> um, obviously, Craig Halkett's out of contract. Stephen Kingsley's out of contract. As is Connor McCarthy at St Mirren. 23, decent young defender. Hearts are bigger than St Mirren. I think it's a perfect stepping stone for him. Come aboard. I'd, take... I, I'd, be, I'd be fine with that. Um, and elsewhere, Big Bevis McGabby's out of contract at Motherwell, and I would love for us to sign him just because his first name is Bevis. And what the fuck does that decent. mean? What does that mean? <laughs> how, many be- how many Bevis do you know? <laughs> the worst. <laughs> no, g- genuinely, Big Bevis McGabby's decent. Can fill right. in either wing back, centre no, half. No, stop He's trying right. to do this. Stop trying but to do Connor this. But Conor McCarthy would be my first choice. Stop trying and to do ideally. all this FM partner no. after you just went. Mate, he's got Bevis. Let's get on board. Ideally, I'd like to keep the back line as it stands. Yeah. And Mihai Popescu is going to be away. Let's let's replace him with another submitted defender. Let's do that. It worked Conor so McCarthy. well last time. Yeah, but Conor McCarthy smells better. Um, moving into midfield, two that I would snap your hand off. For quite frankly, first of which is John Doe Fuchs out of contract at Dundee United. Oh, is Grand- he? Granted, I think his ceiling's a little bit higher than Hearts. However, should anything happen, I'd uh, I'd be all over that. Hasn't 100%. his form like taken a dive off a cliff though? I think I think he's been out with injury, and I oh, want to okay. say he's did he feature on Saturday against Rangers? He might be one of the ones with the COVID case. I can find out for you. I don't know. Um, and elsewhere, a player that I've said that I really like on the podcast before, Jamie McGrath at St Mirren. Previously, Hibs linked, which is annoying, but it'd be brilliant if we could pip them to the signing of Jamie McGrath. Fuchs take, did not we'd take, play. We'd take either of them. Right, so he's first. He's one of the first names on the team sheet, so I'm assuming he's out. Um, yeah, we'd, I'd, I'd, that's a decent partnership, Fuchs yeah. and McGrath. The problem is, it's in an area where we are so good. Just now, yeah. like three of our best players I are hear that. I hear that. And even... 
even like Aaron McInef is not getting his yeah. game. Jamie Walker isn't getting his game, but might do so more regularly now. Yeah, uh, uh, elsewhere in midfield, very limited again. I'd, I'd a look if we're desperate, but again, like you say, it's a strong area. Ian Harks, I think, had a wee upturn of form, but overall, do I believe he's enough for Harks? Yeah. No. Yeah. And Harry Payton, former Hearts youth, doing no. bits at Ross County, but no. no. At the end of the day, it's Ross County, um, yeah. and we are Hearts. Um, Ryan Hedges, his deal's up at Aberdeen. In my opinion, he's the best player, and Again, ceiling probably bigger than hearts, but why not? On the left hand side, an interesting one. Um, I, I do quite like Craig Sibold, always have, but I, I doesn't barely gets his game for Livingston. Reagan Charles Cook is doing bits for Ross County, by the way. What a player! Um, but this is the point I was going to come on to because I was looking at those names and I'm not particularly happy with them. I have said previously that Tony Watt would be the one. Kevin Kyle said on Open Goal that was released on the day of recording that Hart should go in for Tony Watt. I gave that a wee watch and I was thinking, yes. He's just rejected a new deal, eh? Yes, he has. And supposedly there's championship sides interested, which is annoying. But Big Kev said that Hart should go in for Tony Watt. And he asked Andy Halliday, who's obviously on the panel about it. Andy Halliday said that he would not fit into our 3-4-3 and I could not disagree anymore. He wouldn't. He wouldn't at all. Have you seen how he's played for Motherwell this season? On the left of a three, up front. Yeah, yeah, and that wouldn't work with Boyce because Boyce is in the middle of the channel and Watt's entire game this season has been getting on the left and cutting in. That then creates a complete exactly. overload in the middle. He and Boyce Barry Mackay did... cutting inside, no. feeding through Liam Boyce. No, that's but not what he's been did... doing, though. He's not been doing that. He's not been playing it in. Together. <laughs> Stop, it. Stop it. Stop <laughs> it. Imagine He's... that. Imagine Michael Smith and Alex Cochran going beyond. Tony Watt and Barry Mackay have drifted inside. Listen. Something in Liam Boyce. The occasional shot every now and then. But it, wouldn't, we, be be the, it wouldn't be the occasional shot. He would become <laughs> very annoyed that he isn't the main focal point, which he's justified to be annoyed at. I think he's making a massive mistake not Signing yeah. For what it's worth, I agree. Because, because now, he's, now he's found a home. And I had said yeah. that he'd had more clubs than Tiger Woods. And he's looked his best at Motherwell. Yeah, it's working. He has Why would you his not? entire career. But yeah. it, he'll go down south or something, probably. And I don't um, think he'll do near as well. And elsewhere, a couple joke figures up front. Um, Eamon Brophy had said that I'd previously liked, but doesn't score frequently enough for St Mirren. I think no. he's a decent enough player, but... He's not a frequent goal scorer. So, hey, he's probably perfect for Hearts in no, that exactly. sense. Um, and I, I've thrown this in just to annoy you specifically. Oh, for fuck's sake. Because there is a small dying part of me inside. <laughs> I can't believe I'm about to usher these words. I'm going to get... There it is! For there it is! So, what? There it is! <laughs> you meant to say you can't believe you're going to utter <laughs> these words and you said All right. usher. All right. Is that... <laughs> Oh, I, I always thought it was usher these words. Oh, no! my God. All oh, right. Oh, well. See, I was right. I shot myself there. <laughs> Jesus. Did you see me leap up? It's like, fucking hell. <laughs> Sorry for my language. Just dropping the F-bomb there, but Jesus. There is a small part of me that one day dreams of seeing the Joker celebration come on out, cover the hand, up like that, having just scored for hearts, his boyhood heroes... <laughs> Jason Cummings. Right, he's so, better than Nandwili. You can't tell me that he's not. I mean, I swear to God, Nandwili scored more goals than him this like, in the last I, 20 I'm games convinced. Or I'm convinced Jason Cummings has more Tyne Castle goals than Armand Nandwili this season. Just throwing it out there. I've no idea, but he's he's awful. He's not even in the Dundee first team anymore. Like <laughs> He's too busy at open goal. Yeah, he's, a, he's just a fucking nightmare. I want him absolutely nowhere near the club. I've never wanted him anywhere near the club. And it's spe- he is the definition of a good champ- Scottish championship striker <laughs> and can't do anything in the premiership. We were right to let him he go had, at youth level. He has he is scored a against bad. us this season. I don't give a shit. Who else? <laughs> fucking everybody scored against us this season. That doesn't mean you're good. Not so sure. Third best defensive record in the league. 
right? But folk who have scored against us, the amount of times it's like the first goal for so and so, <laughs> it's this random guy you've never heard of. No, I, 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 that celebration is iconic. No, it isn't. <laughs> it is. Do you understand what iconic means? <laughs> it is. That's an insane I, take. If he were to sign for Hearts, I'd get that tattooed. I'm the one with the tattoos. You can't steal my gimmick. If you take that, <laughs> what have I got? Dun, dun, dun. Actually, I better not. Right. Right. So, yeah. That, right. That, Listen, that, we're that meant was the to list of all its glory. We were meant the list to... was incredibly underwhelming. We Past seasons, I've looked at it and I'd be like, I'd take, I'd take, I'd take. I'm looking at the list now and thinking, Sean Rooney, I'd take. John Del Fuchs, I'd take. Jamie McGrath, I'd take. And Tony Watt, I'd take. And Ryan Hedges, actually. So that's what? One, two, three, four, five. Five? Five. And a keeper, if CG doesn't sign, but please sign, I love you, Craig. Right, we're ending this on a positive. That was meant to be positive, but it that fucking was, wasn't it. That was dreadful. That Can was I just awful. Say, like, there is some pod prep that does go into this, and we know that the show is a shambles for the most part. Hey, listen, can, it's Christmas. This is can, our Christmas party equivalent. It. We can accept that. I've done nothing on the game. Couldn't care less about the Dundee game other than the fact that it brought us three points. Don't care. Exactly. Right. But anyway, other than right. that, that's the only prep I've done was right. searching well, the transfer market and it's nonsense. Other stuff. So you finish off. This has been dreadful. We're I'm not re- releasing this. This has been <laughs> tragic. It's, been, it's comfortably been the worst episode yet. What <laughs> a great way to end the year. It's been brutal. Absolute bull. Well, a great way to end the year is out of nowhere, Hearts just making a signing out with a transfer window. Hallelujah. Which is great. So, it isn't a free agent. I, might I know, exactly. Exactly. Wow. A couple of months ago, my soulmate, Cami Devlin, went on the Scars Around <laughs> Funnel podcast and was asked if he could pick one Australian player uh, who he'd like known or played with or kind of had ideas about to come to Hearts, who would you pick? That wasn't and, Ryan McGowan. Yes, it wasn't Ryan McGowan. But someone who played in the same position as Ryan McGowan. Or Dylan. Yes. <laughs> You're ruining the moment of this man who has a name that's like mine and I'm immediately I like him. Oh, oh brilliant. So you're slating <laughs> Davis McGabby's first name, but all of a sudden because he's got a similar name to you, it's A-OK. That's Do one, McIver. I'm a yeah, fickle I man. Oh, so get it up you. He mentioned Nathaniel Atkinson very quickly. He didn't really think about it either. And he said that he was a very hotly tipped young fullback who clearly was at a better level than the A League. And he was really looking forward to see what he could do. What are you laughing about? I'm just <laughs> I'm just thinking about the last highly regarded fullback that Hart signed. <laughs> it's probably Joe on Oshini, wasn't it? Yeah, probably. I can't think of any others. No, oh, Michael Smith came in under the radar. King- <laughs> Kingsley, I guess. Oh, Stephen Kingsley, yeah. Yeah, so... <laughs> but prior- yeah, let's- yeah, let's go with Kingsley rather than Joe or Oshini. Well, my goodness. But yeah, so, listen, that's just Cameron Devon <laughs> saying that he wants a player. That doesn't mean anything in the grand scheme of things. However, it seems that Cameron Devon is one of our scouts as we are just... <laughs> Raiding the A-League, and I am fully, fully on board with this, as it was just kind of announced out of nowhere that Nathaniel Atkinson has signed for us just on the condition of a work permit. So he's a right back who is 22, but he can also play right mid and right wing. He can play at the entire side, however. Oh, versatility. Yeah, exactly. He is primarily, however, a wing back, which is clearly the system that we have. We need a right wing back because Taylor Moore isn't that, and Smith isn't kind of been as consistent to be honest this season because of injury which is a real shame this is where I was speaking about the start of the podcast I would like a back five I've never seen I've seen this guy score one goal a back right? five so like I mean like the wing backs like you treat right, it like okay. a back five like a three four three but in defence it's a back five yeah, okay a back five of Cochrane and Atkinson as wing backs and with Kingsley out just now Halkett in the middle with um Smith and Suter either side of them, three centre halves. Interesting. I like it. Do you though? No, can't say can't say I disagree. Michael Smith's the best footballer at the club. There's a ball playing centre half alongside my man Soapy. Yeah. 
I think it would work. Obviously, I don't. We don't know what this act can see. Right? I mean, Michael Smith is. Yeah. Uh, what a man! Love him. But again, haven't seen him play. Can't comment. Um, I love the fact that Robbie has known this geezer a manner of months. I.e., Cammy Devlin has just instantly put his faith and his budget towards a player that he's recommended. Fantastic. I mean, no wonder. Like, look at how Cammy Devlin's went. He's clearly oh, just went. Here he's clearly just we went. Go. All the Australians are class. <laughs> Let's oh just get them all in. God. We've had a good in our lifetimes. We've had good luck with Australians. We very rarely had bad Australians. Right, give me some. Give me some good ones. Paddy is normal. Paddy is normal. The McGowan brothers. I would argue Ryan more so than Dylan. But Dylan was solid. Like it was never. You were never like Dylan's the worst player ever or anything like that. Dylan was right. fine. It, it was um, average. It was average. Yeah, that's. But that's. Guys are like me saying that, but that's fine. Yeah. Listen, I got Dylan McGowan shirt at Aberdeen away. I'm always. Oh, so he must that. be amazing. Yeah, okay, right. And it wasn't even me; it was my brother. Then Bazanich oh. scored the best goal I've probably ever seen no, in the flesh. No, we're not doing this. Bazanich no. scored the bit. That's a statement that you can't deny. Yeah. Okay. So a therefore, goal. I love him. I don't care oh, if he was the most boring no. man on the he planet. Was honking. I think that's a bit hard. He wasn't no, great, terrible. but he was fine. He was nope. all right. Listen, he scored two Bang very average. important goals for us. Bang average at best. But yeah. right. So yeah, even, okay. Well, well, they'd be important goals had we stayed up or won the cup, and we did neither. That Hibs goal is still amazing, though. I think no, of course it, it's it was amazing. It relegated for that. <laughs> is it? Yeah. <laughs> and, it. Budget, and budget disagree, and all last summer so, the hearts rage. So fuck it. But if the worst thing you can say about an Australian in our lifetime is that they were average, the amount of people that we've had that it's like they're the worst players yeah, we've ever fair, seen. Fair point. And, and, okay, Kids Norball give you, and Gows obviously won the cup with us, so we can't. And win. Devlin, Devlin's been amazing. So far, so far, should have scored at the weekend. I don't care though. I he could he can do no wrong for me. At the end of the day, you were slating biscuits in the box. There was no slating of Cammy Devlin just there. He wasn't in the box. That's why he sh- his first touch should take him in the box. It doesn't. It, it didn't, didn't even you know, get there. It didn't. Do, so who gives a shit? <laughs> well, that's us for the year. What a way to end this show. It's, it's just it's been, been the great. biggest car crash episode I've ever seen. It's been the best one we've ever done. It's very warm now in this room with a Christmas jumper. Marvelous. I'm dying. But huge, genuine huge thanks to everybody this year. This has been the first full calendar year, really, that we've done the podcast. Because we started... Which it's it's crazy to think that we are almost a year removed from Brora. That's crazy. Like that's yeah, mental. That's mad. It it was weird when I saw like Facebook memories of the past couple of days being that COVID Cup final. That feels like a lifetime ago. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It's it's pretty great. And listen, the support that we have had this year has been unbelievable let's let's just be totally honest it's not been an easy year for everybody there's been a lot of kind of worries about finances about lockdowns about restrictions made worse by listening to this every week yeah exactly don't know why you still do fair play like thanks but what are you doing it for yeah mental health has not been high this year for everybody however i can speak for myself and i presume i speak for adam I'll, i'll let him say as well that this has been a constant source of positivity. Uh, the support that we've received from everybody has been unbelievable. We've this year grown so hugely. And obviously it's not about just like, we're only happy to do this for numbers or anything like that, but it always helps when people enjoy it. And the way that people have just immediately taken to us and regularly come back every single week and listen to us talk absolute rubbish like we have done tonight is insane the opportunities we've had to work with the club having players being interviewed and that will hopefully only increase in 2022 if all things go well and just a huge huge thank you and adam i presume you feel the same way undoubtedly mate it's a uh, it's a decent source of therapy this podcast malarkey isn't it or, or it was for me in the championship season because that was just brutal. Um, but now it's 
it's nice talking about hearts being in a good spot, the podcast in a good spot. Um, we hope that you're all in a good spot. Um, and hopefully the, the upcoming year will bring more heart success, um, better moods all around for everybody. And hopefully we can finally shift away from all this COVID malarkey. But thank you all very much for your support. It's greatly appreciated. Um, and there's got to be something that brings us back week after week. So here we go. Definitely. Listen, we're not going to do the usual. Here's where you can find us. If you've been listening long enough, you know where it is. We'll come back to that in the new year. But that is the final thing. We don't know when we'll be back because of the restrictions. So hopefully we're back the Tuesday recording after the derby hopefully that's the plan we're taking next week off just because that's the day i get my booster what a laugh oh that's going to be some laugh I'll isn't be it? Bits. oh god but the plan is take next week off because we're just with families i'm away back home so i'm not going to be able to record or anything like that come back for the week after the derby however if there's no games on we'll work something out we will see but until then Please keep safe. Have a great Christmas. Have a great New Year. Get your vaccines. Get your boosters, as Adam said. Try and stay safe. And we'll see you all next time. Bye-bye. See you later. Mon the hearts!